Jean-Claude Van Damme, often known as The Muscles from Brussels, is a Belgian actor, producer, and martial artist who skyrocketed to fame in the late 1980s and 90s. With a career built on showcasing his martial arts chops and action-packed films, he became a prominent figure in Hollywood. While once a Hollywood heavyweight, in recent years, Jean-Claude seems to have fallen out of favor with the masses. Join us as we explore the potential reasons behind this drastic shift in public appearance. The Friends Cast's Unsettling Experience with Van Damme The classic NBC sitcom Friends holds a significant place in TV history, boasting of numerous episodes that not only entertain viewers, but also introduce them to a galaxy of stars. One such star was Jean-Claude Van Damme, who appeared in the episode The One After the Super Bowl Part II, which aired in 1996. Although Van Damme's guest role was supposed to add a dash of flair to the episode, it seems to have left a bitter taste in the mouths of some primary cast members, Jennifer Aniston and Courtney Cox. As recounted by the episode's director, Michael Lembeck, during an oral history session on this episode with entertainment outlet THR, working with Van Damme proved to be more of a challenge than a delightful collaboration. Lembeck painted Van Damme as being quite difficult to manage on set, with allegations of him being unprepared and unprofessional. However, what stands out as more disturbing are the accounts of discomfort experienced by Aniston and Cox during the filming of the scenes involving intimate moments with Van Damme. According to Lembeck, both actresses had separately approached approached him with the same request, asking him to tell Van Damme not to put his tongue in their mouths during the kissing scenes. This incident paints a rather clear picture of the unsettling power dynamics that can play out behind the scenes, potentially highlighting Van Damme's assumption that his status as an action icon would excuse such inappropriate behavior. While it's important to note that neither Van Damme nor any other member of the Friends cast has further commented on this alleged incident, and there remains a possibility of embellishment or misremembering on Lembeck's part, this record stands as a sobering reminder of the uncomfortable situations actors might find themselves in. Van Damme was shown the door on the Predator set. In the blossoming phase of his career, when he was yet to become a well-known name, Jean-Claude had bagged a significant role in the 1987 film Predator, where he was initially cast to play the titular alien character. However, his stint with the project was short-lived, culminating in his replacement by Kevin Peter Hall. This chapter in Van Damme's career unraveled due to a series of incidents that highlighted his seeming inability to align with the vision of the movie's creators. Sources paint a vivid picture of Van Damme's time on the Predator set, a period marked by his persistent insistence on incorporating kickboxing elements into the Predator character. Despite the clear directive that the Predator was not envisioned as a kickboxer, Van Damme reportedly continued to exhibit his high kick prowess, much to the dismay of producer Joel Silver. This obstinance culminated in heated exchanges with Silver, showcasing a determined Van Damme attempting to steer the characters in a direction aligning with his martial arts background, even at the cost of not complying with the director's vision. As anecdotes from the set reveal, Van Damme's fervor for kickboxing reached a point where it became disruptive and untenable. This culminated in a memorable altercation in Silver's trailer where a firm directive to abandon the kickboxing approach was met with a defiant and rather audacious response from Van Damme. This encounter marked the end of his association with the project. It's worth noting that his dismissal from Predator wasn't solely a result of his kickboxing enthusiasm. His time on set was also marred by other controversies, including an incident where he allegedly destroyed a $20,000 Predator head prop in a fit of frustration. His dissatisfaction with the costume, paired with concerns about his height and a desire for his face to be visible on screen, further fueled the discord, making his continuation in the role untenable. Reflecting back, it appears Van Damme's departure from Predator may have been a blessing in disguise for the project, allowing the character to evolve in a direction that aligned more closely with the creator's original vision. Despite the contentious and rather colorful nature of his exit, it stands as an example of Van Damme's fiery spirit and unyielding commitment to his craft, qualities that, for better or worse, have defined his turbulent journey in the world of cinema. This episode likewise serves as a striking piece in the unfolding puzzle of why Van Damme's star, once so bright, has experienced a significant dimming in recent years. 
Van Damme vs. Seagal – The Clash of Two Action Titans As the 90s unfurled, the zenith of action cinema was unfolding. The stage had been set by legends like Schwarzenegger and Stallone, while other notable names like Bruce Willis and Mel Gibson were also becoming prominent fixtures in the domain. The video boom of this era facilitated the rise of numerous new action heroes, while a few of them from the 80s, like Chuck Norris and Dolph Lundgren, managed to solidify their footing. But among the pantheon of action stars, two men were inching dangerously close to challenging the undisputed titans, Arnold and Sly. Jean-Claude Van Damme and Steven Seagal seemed to be on the verge of clinching a top spot at the Planet Hollywood table, navigating through the waters of fame with hits such as Universal Soldier, Time Cop, and Under Siege. While both were nearing the pinnacle of their careers, their journeys were different. Van Damme's relentless efforts from his days of financial struggle bore fruit with his breakthrough in Bloodsport, gradually elevating him through progressively grander ventures. Meanwhile, Seagal, the enigmatic Aikido master with a touch of mythos surrounding surrounding him, made impactful connections in Hollywood early on, leveraging them to land a notable debut with Above the Law. The 90s saw the emergence of a rivalry fiercer and more bitter than the friendly competitiveness between Arnold and Sly. The competition between Van Damme and Seagal was marred with both subtle dismissals and blatant disparagement, notably more from Seagal's end. He used public platforms to demean Van Damme as an actor and martial artist. Others in the industry also questioned Van Damme's authenticity, leading to multiple challenges for real-life duels, which Van Damme declined. Even rumors swirled about both stars challenging each other to a fight, with one infamous incident reportedly occurring at a party hosted by Stallone, which allegedly saw a quick exit by Seagal to avoid a confrontation with Van Damme. Despite their stardom, both actors garnered reputations for being challenging to work with, especially noted for their rough handling of stuntmen on sets. Hollywood avoids him like the plague. Jean-Claude Van Damme, once a staple in the action hero scene of the 80s and 90s, found his golden days in Hollywood cut short, largely due to an inflated ego and a debilitating addiction. After basking in the success of Time Cop, Van Damme's subsequent demand of a staggering $20 million per film, a figure aimed to rival comedy icon Jim Carrey's earnings, was met with disdain by industry stakeholders. This hubris-driven standoff became a significant turning point, ushering in an era of of dwindling offers and strained relations with Hollywood magnates, who viewed his demands as unrealistic and a glaring display of overestimation of his market value. The nosedive didn't end there. A simultaneous battle with a crippling addiction further alienated him, spiraling his life and career into a state of chaos and uncertainty. The illicit substance fueled grandiose tendencies and bred an escalating arrogance. Despite a rocky journey back to sobriety and attempts to reclaim his cinematic journey with performances in films like JCVD and The Expendables 2, his relationship with Hollywood remains forever tainted. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Jean-Claude Van Damme? Let us know in the comments section below.